Hello and welcome to our fact-based conference on tuberculosis and multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. We thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to meet with us here today. Now, tuberculosis is not a new disease and there is evidence of it dating back to ancient Egyptian times. Tuberculosis in humans is caused by a bacterium called myobacterium tuberculosis. Unlike other bacteria, tuberculosis bacilli have a phospholipid bilayer. This layer prevents lysosome fusion and renders macrophage phagocytosis ineffective. A tuberculosis infection is treated with drugs such as rivampicin and isoniazide. Latent infections are given first-line drugs, while active infections are given both first- and second-line drugs. Resistant strains of tuberculosis develop when a patient discontinues treatment for a latent or active infection earlier than recommended. When a resistant strain is encountered, third-line drugs will be given. If a patient is still unresponsive, lobectomies to remove a cavitation and or chemotherapy may be started. Diagnosing TB uses three different tests. First, a Manteau test, also a tuberculin skin test. If this is positive, a chest x-ray to look for nodules will be taken. If a further confirmation is needed or the susceptibility of the bacilli needs to be determined, a smear and culture may be done. Another indicator of bacterial resistance and susceptibility is if the patient receiving treatment is compliant and not responding to the treatment. Conditions which increase the risk of tuberculosis include immunosuppressed patients, for example, HIV patients, diabetes, renal failure, and lower than ideal body weight. High risk groups in our society include the homeless population and inmates in correctional facilities, immigrants and aboriginals, healthcare workers, and other public service employees working in close contact with high risk groups, and families who are in close contact with infected individuals, especially children and the elderly. Now let's talk about the nurse's role. The nurse's role in helping treat and prevent tuberculosis includes assessing the patient for signs and symptoms of TB, as well as assessing the patient's response to the medication, appropriate infection control, such as airborne precautions, political lobbying and increasing public awareness, and teaching. Teaching includes advising the client to refrain from public activities with an active case of TB, limiting the number of visitors, covering their mouth and nose when sneezing and coughing, and teaching around their medications. The client also has to understand that if they do not take their medication, they will lose their freedom under the Health Act. One strategy to stop the spread of tuberculosis and the development of multidrug resistant tuberculosis is the Direct Observation Therapy Program, or DART. It is recommended by the World Health Organization as a way to increase compliance and offer support to clients. DART involves an individual swallowing their pills in front of a healthcare professional. DART also presents a good opportunity for frequent patient assessment. Now let's talk about some myths around tuberculosis. Myth. TB is a death sentence and there is no treatment and it is very contagious. Fact. Effective treatment is available for TB and when taken as directed will treat it. The likelihood of contracting TB depends on close contact and the susceptibility of the host. Myth. Non-pulmonary cases are contagious. Fact. TB can only be spread through aerosolized particles. This concludes our presentation on TB today. Thank you for taking time out of your schedules to talk about this very important issue.